Sylvia. And throw it in the towel. It's all. Johnny, congrats. Thank you. How do you feel, man? I feel good. Um, <clears throat> it felt different. You know, going in the second, third round, that's usually whenever I die. You know, I'm trying to survive the third round. And I was out there bouncing around, you know, enjoying it. You know, really, it, a lot of it just boils back to I enjoyed it. You know, this fight week was fun. You know, it wasn't a miserable fight week. Uh, <laughs> that's really all I can, I, you know, that's all I can really explain it to is that it became fun again, not just a, a dreadful week. The, and, and obviously you attribute the, <laughs> the 15 extra pounds to, to all of that, uh, all of that energy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not killing myself. Whenever I go home, I don't have to worry about my kidney shutting down. I don't have to worry about none of that. All I got to worry about is, <clears throat> you know, start barbecuing and having some fun again. Fifteen extra pounds of barbecue, that's what it comes to. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not going to blow up that big. Like I said, I want to stay 205, 210 like I have been. But, you know, this fight, we didn't get a strength conditioning coach. It was a quick turnaround. You know, uh, the next fight, I'm going to be better. I'm going to have better cardio. Uh, and those are things that sort of even ex scare me a little bit and excite me at the same time. How much better could I be if I, could, if I knew that my third round was going to be as good as it was today? I could push harder in the second round. I could have pushed harder in the third. But my mind is so trained to being so tired by the third round. <clears throat> I was just like, you know what? Let's cruise. Or not cruise, but you know what I mean? Like, don't push your body so hard that you fade like you have in the past. Sure. Um, but after that fight, I was like, <clears throat> and that's just growing as a fighter. <clears throat> and that's really what it boils down to is tonight I grew. And it's been a very long time since that's happened. You were in the, in the fight itself, you were working a lot of kicks, a lot of knees. And he seemed to be catching a few of them and throwing you off balance a little bit. Was there ever a point in the fight when you, when you thought, you know, maybe <clears throat> abandon this and and shoot in on him and go because you also didn't have to wrestle much no i was beating him on the feet so i didn't have to wrestle him mm. i used my wrestling to set up my knees my hands uh uppercuts you know what i mean like I, I was putting things together when's the last time you saw me put things together it's been what two a few, years a few fights yeah yeah yeah, I'm going to take what I've got. You know what I mean? I'm going to be happy with what my, what, you know, like I said, I'm looking at the fight. I replay it through my mind. I'm like, I, that's the first thing I told my coach is I actually flowed out there. And that's the first time I've flowed in I don't know how long. Really, it's been a long time. Probably a Matt Brown fight. <clears throat> um, and I, I know you talked about wanting to be able to have a, a little bit longer of a turnaround and get that fuller, fuller camp, but obviously Dallas is three months away. Is that something you're looking at, and, and are you injury-free enough to be able to, to pull off that kind of turnaround? I'm hoping that I'm injury-free enough. Uh, I'm going to check out my hand, uh, the pain. I think I just – the stinger. Have you ever, yeah, the stinger, man. It's, it still hurts, right? <clears throat> it's, it's, it's like pinched in between. It's like It feels like the little knuckles or the little bones in between my bigger ones. <clears throat> um, and <clears> – <throat> I would like to, you know, realistically, if I had three months to fight in Dallas, that's plenty of time because I could find a nutrition or not a nutritionist, but a, a strength conditioning coach that could get me to where I need to be. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm running off of just what I know. <clears throat> give me, give me a couple more tools in my arsenal, man. I can't wait to see what 185 has to hold for me. Questions? Any more? <clears throat> Is, is there any regret that it took you this long in your career yes. to sort of realize that you're better at 185? Is that well, you know what? Here's the thing: is that you make such a good mark at 170. You know what I'm saying? And and, and please turn off your cell phone. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just 
joke. I swear to God. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did not mean to make you embarrassed. I really did. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I just broke out in a sweat. <laughs> yeah, you're on scare tactics. Uh, what was the question? Oh, uh, about making the move to 185, right? Uh, <clears throat> you know what? We made us such a good mark at 170. Uh, it's, it's hard to give that up. You know, it really was. It was so hard to give that up. And <clears throat> now that I look back, I'm like, you're an idiot for not doing it sooner. But who's to say that that's not the right time for me to move up? You know, I, I really believe that God has a purpose for everything that I do. <clears throat> and, you know, you miss by a, a quarter of a pound, <clears throat> and then you miss by two and a half. All right. Then your kidneys fell for five, I think, six days, and they rebooted, and I, I came back. That's really, I think, everything lines up. I, I believe there's a purpose for everything, and I think my purpose was to... I was trying to do it on my own instead of listen. And I always tell myself, hey, listen to your body. Listen to what it has to say. And we and the coaches, we just decided it's not time to give up 170 yet. And then when you miss by two and a half, you're like, I'm done giving 20% up. Let's just see if the fat guy can make 185. <clears throat> and see how he does at 185. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else for Johnny? Oh. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Uh, so on Friday at the uh, the media day, you kind of you kind of said that you know obviously a higher weight class, you're not half to contend with the the cutting as much. Uh, how mu what did you definitely take on that you may not have? focused on and pass cuts <clears throat> my striking <clears throat> you know and my jiu-jitsu I mean my whole game <clears throat> it was weird like I've been doing like uh, so on Tuesday I did uh I did four or five rounds with uh Guy at Gameness with some guys they're very talented Juan and Mar uh, Juan and Marco uh <clears throat> these guys are amazing uh I've been rolling in Guy uh twice a week uh, I've been striking. It, you tell me what hasn't changed in my game in the last five weeks. <clears throat> it's been, I, I, you know, I keep saying this to you guys, but I don't know how else to describe it. It became a joy. You know, we're, I'm even talking about, they put me on seven days of suspension because of my hand. I'm like, screw that. I might be back in Tuesday. You know, because we're traveling all day tomorrow to get back to Texas. But <clears throat> it became fun again. I became excited to do this sport. <clears throat> you know, every day you, you're hating life and you're hating what you're doing. <clears throat> you're not going to want to be back in there for two months. Guess what? I'm excited to get back in there. I'm excited to, you know, to feed off what I did tonight. Okay, I saw that he was ducking his head. The first knee, it landed, but not great. Guess what? The last three landed great. I'll take those any day of the week because he's not going to hold me down in my jiu-jitsu. You know what I mean? He's not going to outstrike me. He's not going to hit me with that left hand coming around the corner. <clears throat> boom, boom, boom. I'll take that any day of the week. And my mind, so I can feed off that, I can say, hey, coaches, what, what could we have done here? <clears throat> let's do this and let's practice it. Uh, Johnny, you told me the other day you think it might take a little bit to actually grow into this weight class, but considering how you felt tonight, like how do you think you are going to match up with some of the, you know, the bigger, stronger, taller, uh, lengthier middleweights in this division? Stronger? I don't know. Hector Lombard is pretty strong, right? He's a pretty strong for a welterweight. Um, taller? Easier. You know, I mean, look at, look, at, look at the Neil Magny. He didn't touch me. He didn't touch me. <laughs> this? unscathed whenever I fought Neil Magny. What do you have? An 80 inch reach? I got 69 and a half. The dude couldn't touch me on my feet. Somehow he won the fight. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be fighting a guy that has a 76 inch reach and is going, screw this little dude. I'm going to mess him up tonight. Come on. Yeah, like that's the kind of guys I want. Look, I mean, <clears throat> I want people that are going to come and try to beat me. I want people that are going to try to hurt me. 
Like, that's the kind of excitement I get out of this. And finally, I can get it back, because guess what? I'm 12 over right now. <laughs> I'm not 23 or 25. I'm barely over. And if they called me and said, hey, we need you to fight in five weeks, all right, I'll be there in five weeks. Well, you hinted the other day when we spoke as well that maybe in your post-fight interview, you'd have a message for George St. Pierre, who we know is coming back now. Uh, you didn't, you went the other way, you like praise Canada, um, but do you have a yeah, message at hey, this point? You know or? Just because I praise Canada doesn't mean I, want, I don't want to beat up George St. Pierre again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, I love Canada, Canada people. You know what? I have people that are stopping in the middle of the road to take a picture with me. How humbling is that, right? This is Canada. You're in George country. <clears throat> and for them to do that to me, uh, I'm very grateful. I love Canada. Like I said, I'm 4-0 in Canada. And <clears throat> George might be coming back. I just say sorry for the Canadians. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to beat his face in. Definitely if it comes to 185. Because that's a fight that I've been really looking forward. And now that i got a win on my belt at 185, He's a newcomer in 185. Supposedly, I think he said he might come to 185 because he wants to fight Bisbing. <clears throat> Who would want to see him and Bisbing or me and Bisbing? I'm pretty sure the whole, whole world wants, would much rather see that. Cool. Anybody else? Nope. Johnny, thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are? Is there, is there a Coke? Yes. All right. All right. Somebody drank all the Cokes and then... That's what sucks about fighting last. All the good food is gone and the drinks. <laughs> Gavin. Oh yeah. Congrats, man. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me, uh, tell me what that feels like because you know, 
let's be honest, that should have been a, probably a, a competitive fight mm. for your first time out. And you, you kind of, you pretty much ran circles around him. And that's not easy to do in your first UFC fight. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, happy I, I'm happy I won. But as soon as we hit the dressing room backstage, we just started talking about the opportunities that I, I had to finish that I didn't take. I wanted to finish for my debut. And um, like Sam's a tough guy, man. I don't know if everybody's got skulls like that in the UFC, but uh, that's, <laughs> that's that. I, I wish I had finished. I had opportunities to finish on the takedown when I went for the heel hook. Um, I didn't control the second leg, just pulled some, some kind of amateur moves, but um, it's, good. it's good to get a win and still have stuff to take away to work on. So I'm, pre I'm pretty happy. The crowd was really receptive and uh, it was a good night. I mean, the crowd was super receptive. I mean, how does it feel to walk out to, to that kind of ovation? I mean, I hate giving the same answer. I, was, <laughs> I, was, I haven't decided on a feeling because I don't, I don't even know what, what to call it yet. But I guess, like, um, I'm happy. Did the fight go the way that you thought it would? I mean, the way you game plan for, for a guy like him, did everything play out the way you expected it to? Pretty much. I mean, with a guy like Sam, <clears throat> really heavy on the back foot, throws from the hip with that right hand. Um, so... Like my coaches, um, Peter and, um, and uh, my coach, uh, Coco, they said, you know, don't give him a stationary target and it's going to be okay. And of course, it's my first fight. I'm, I was very stressed, you know, thinking about it. I got a lot of pressure. My family's here. And it's hard to think, think clearly when it comes to that. But Coco kept bringing it up to me. He's like, if this guy walked into the gym right now and you guys were sparring, do you think, do you think this guy would beat you? I said, I said, no. So we just went out and I just tried to enjoy myself. And... Uh, for the most part, I did. I mean, you said you were stressed. I mean, in the fight, he was obviously ridiculously stressed trying to track you down. You just never were there. Uh, you did a little, you had some fun in there, though. A little, yeah, a little bit. I mean, what do you call it? Do you call it showboating? I don't want to be no, disrespectful. No, I think that was more for strategy. I mean, I, I would never intentionally be disrespectful to anybody who's in there in that cage. It takes a lot of like courage to get in there, you know, no, no, no lie. But I was hoping that kind of a little bit of antics would draw him in more. Um, you see me like fishing him in a little bit, trying to trying to Toriano a little bit and, and play, hoping that he would get a little more frustrated and commit because we really wanted to drag him into the left hand. Um, I had planned to sit a little more on that left hand and, and drive it down the pipe, but I was winning. And, mm -hmm. of course, you don't want to risk your debut. I want to secure my spot. And... Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that I did. But like I said, there was opportunities to finish. And uh, uh, um, I'm going to take it away from the fight. So the win is good, but also stuff to work on. Now that you're here, though, how fast do you want to get back in there and, and sort of start to assert yourself, you know, as the, the new kid on the block, the I'll new name to watch tomorrow, for? Tomorrow, man. I'm healthy. I'm ready to go. I took, I think, one one shot. I'm, I'm ready to roll. I'm here now. The checks are bigger. We get to train more with, uh, with a lot less. No more on the peanut butter sandwich diet. <clears throat> Buying all my guitars back. It's nice. <laughs> uh, could you talk a bit about Titans MMA and how they prepared you for this fight? Yeah, absolutely. So this gym, this is the first gym I've ever been a part of. And Peter Martel has been my coach since day one. And uh, when we got the call a month out, we just immediately started, started preparing. Um, myself, Peter, Pat, uh, my girl Danielle Kurash came in, and like um, these guys are beside me three, four times a day. I basically live in that place right now. I know like uh, the mat has got uh, has got my footprints over it every day, you know. And uh, and I'm comfortable there, but also very uncomfortable there because these guys push you. Our team, we've got a great jiu-jitsu team, multiple black belts, uh, world boxing champions, and even though we may be a small city, I think we have just as many resources as, as a lot of these places so my coaches keep telling me you know don't don't be intimidated just because this guy's in the UFC because Sam, Sam has more fights in the UFC than I have fights but they just kept telling me like you're defending your belt in your hometown this the UFC is for for you guys for press and a banner that everyone kind of sees but for me in in my mind this was Gavin Tucker's 10th fight so Every fight is like the first fight, and they just help prepare me here, you know, and, and, and tell me to accept the responsibility of my goals, and this pressure and these people are going to be around now. So I felt like I was ready, not just physically, but like everything I had to do to accept. Like my mom is here. My mom, that's, that's a big deal for me. Well, I'm from Ship Cove, Newfoundland. I think there's maybe 60 people less in this town. This is my mom's first time 
out of Newfoundland, so a really big deal from her. She hasn't seen a rock concert, do you know what I mean? So her first, her first uh, like, uh, big public show was watching her oldest boy fist fight a dude in a cage, which is pretty exotic for northern Newfoundland, you know? And uh, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty friggin' happy everything went the way that it did. Hey, Gavin. I know you're pretty humbled on the win. Um, I don't think you uh, said who you want next. Obviously, it's your first fight in the UFC, but is there someone that might uh, kind of entice you to go back in, or would you just take anyone? Yeah, CM Punk, that would be a great fight. Yeah, I'm gonna get, some, uh, get Dana to open up that checkbook and uh, feel good. I, I, I don't know. I think he might spin circles around. Yeah. <laughs> well, he... Um, I don't really know. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna come off the first fight and be that guy that's naming names. I don't think that's uh, very smart for me to do. I'm a fighter. Fighters fight. Um, they're gonna send me a name, and I'm gonna say yes to it. Gavin, uh, back here. You look at your. I know you said you haven't really decided how you feel about all this, but you look at your Twitter feed. Like the last tweet you posted was asking Sean Shelby to get you on the last Halifax card two years ago. All right. Um, what's this like to you know get two years later, get this opportunity now, and perform like you did tonight? I didn't know. I tweeted that. I think maybe the girl was running my Twitter. So. Um, it's, it's, it's really fantastic to get the opportunity and to be healthy when the opportunity came and to be prepared. Like I said, my, my coach Peter Martel. He said, you'll be ready, right? And I mean, you don't have to tell me. I love training. I get out of bed to train. I'm, I'm happy to do this. Is a, I'm pretty blessed to have to have this job. But we had a feeling that it was coming. And when we got the call, it wasn't like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, what am I going to do? It's like, all right, here it is, you know? Uh, and, um, and now we're going to do... And we're going to do what I, what I plan to do. Like I said, accepting the responsibility of those, of those goals. And now they're real, man. It's just kind of crazy. It's starting to sink in now. When I say it over and over, you guys ask me questions. It's, it's like, okay, maybe it's real after all. <laughs> Good. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Beast, congratulations. That's a regulation sized belt I see that you have there. Tell me about that. We saw you uh, on TV, I think, with it. You gonna carry that around for a while? Yeah, I'm gonna carry it around for a while. You know, I'm interim heavyweight champ, so um, we just see what's next. You know. Tell me uh, about the fight. We, it was kind of hard to hear you in, in your post-fight interview in the cage. Uh, how, what, what hurt when when he kicked you? And obviously. Uh, Obviously, it hurt pretty bad. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was more of I'm just trying not to shit on myself, you know, because I'm holding my gas in and trying to breathe. At the same time, I just didn't want to shit in front of national TV. That's all that was. It happens to everybody once in their lifetimes. That's what I've heard. I didn't want to have not on TV, because especially with this Internet going around, making memes of me and all of that. No, nah, I can't have that. I'm Charlie Brown. Uh, <laughs> Before the second one, I, I kind of started to wonder, maybe are you kind of playing possum with the whole thing? But, but that was legit. I mean, he got you in the midsection. And how did you work through that? How were you able to work through it? Um, I just, like, eased out a little fart, you know, and just trying to clear my stomach out just a little bit. And just once I did that, it was good. Then the second round, it came back again, just stopped bubbling. Then I was like, I got to end this fight. I mean, you had talked about that earlier uh, earlier in fight week that you needed to be more aggressive than you were in Albany. 
obviously that that came on in the, in the second round was was it all about the the feeling in, in the midsection that that really forced that to to get you to go forward like that no and the thing is that reason why i'll be calling out these guys left and right that i know is better than me because I, like i said before it's just going to bring out the better fight in myself and i believe like travis he's better better fighter than me like all the way around mix mixed martial artists and i just feel like that it was just going to bring out a better fight in myself and just put on a better show for the fans. You know, the same way with Big Country. You know, I know Big Country was coming in, and he's got a name behind himself, and I just knew um, it was just going to bring a better fight out of myself. You satisfied with, with the performance you put on tonight because of the fact that you weren't happy with with how things went in Albany uh, and maybe weren't happy with how things went completely in the in the Roy Nelson fight? Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit satisfied than I was my last fight, you know, but I feel still feel like there's a lot of stuff I need to work on. You know, I still need to get behind my punches and stuff like that and work behind my jab. But the thing is, it just I hate throwing jabs. You know, I, to me, jabs are just a waste of time. I just like to just swing and bang. But I know that a lot of guys going to start getting used to that and try to counter off of that. But, you know, my coach say you got to set up the jab and throw – the right hand or whatever behind it, but to me, it just I just hate throwing jabs. I find that you're this kind of fantastic contradiction for yourself in that you say that you need to work on a lot of things and that you're unhappy with your performances, yet you have a belt and you, you plan on being champion in, in, in 2017. So kind of walk me through that line that you have to straddle in your own head with where you are in terms of, of your fight career. It's just that I got to work on my overall game. You know, so a lot of guys at the top five right now, they good everywhere. You know, me, I'm just about almost one-dimensional, you know. But, you know, I, I believe I got the most heart in this division, you know. And so the, my heart carried me. It carried me throughout my whole six-fight win streak or whatever. You know, it carried me my whole way. Make sure you see that I'd be losing the first or second round. In the third or fourth round or whatever, you know, that heart, that beast mode just kick in automatic by itself. And I just thank God for that. <clears throat> Y'all can have this cold out here too, man. All this snow and shit. Uh -uh. I'm from Texas. You said uh, before this fight that you thought the winner of Overeem and Mark Hunt would be a good matchup for you next. Is that kind of what you're eyeing right now? It's only a couple weeks away. Yeah, that'd be good. But um, I still want at least three months off, you know, because the reason why I want three months off because um, I've been fighting just about every other month or every two months like that and just really couldn't just relax my mind, you know. And um, it just causing trouble at home because I'm walking around with an attitude all the time because once I get in beast mode, I'm in beast mode all the way into fight day. So I just want to relax my mind a little bit and work on things at my house. Yeah, you still don't want them to call you for at least three months, right? I don't want them to call me. You know, I already blocked my coaches and my managers already. Like there's some side chicks and say, do not answer. Put their name, do not answer. And what do you think of the stoppage? I think a lot of people thought Mario Yamasaki got in there at least a few shots too late. What's that? What would you think about the stoppage? I think a lot of people thought Mario Yamasaki got in there a few shots too late, that Travis was probably done you know, before those last couple on the ground. No, I appreciate it. I, I, shit, well, yeah, I gave him a $1,000. I appreciate it for letting the fight go a little longer than what it was because I just wanted to get all my anger out on Travis' face anyway because he liked to hit on women. So I appreciate him for doing that. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Nope. I'll keep it real. <laughs> You're all set. Thanks, Derek. Uh, thank you all, man. Appreciate Canada. Thank you all. Y'all can have the snow. You know, I'm going back home to Texas. I've ever seen in my life. A rematch for the top.